Oakley doakley, here we go with applications of sine functions, periodic sinusoidal functions. I guess the first thing we need to look at is what the hell is a sinusoidal function, okay? That's basically a relation that models periodic data, okay? Now what we're looking about with periodic data is this sine and cosine functions, right? So hopefully you remember that we are breaking things down into four pieces, kind of equivalent to your four quadrants, right? So if you look at a unit circle here, right? So from zero to pi over two would be this section right here, zero to pi over two. And then from pi over two to pi would be this next section, and then the three pi over two, and then all the way back to two pi, right? So first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and then fourth quadrant, all right? Now, if you looked at sine functions, you'd know that sine zero at zero, and then it goes up to one, it goes down to zero, goes to negative one, then goes back to zero. And we end up having a graph that looks something like this. Okay. If you look at a cos function, you know it starts at 1, and then every quadrant it goes to its other sort of location, and we can get a similar graph for a cos function that's just a phase shift away. All right. These are your original functions. This is y equals cos x, and this one here is y is equal to sine x. Now, if, you if you're okay with those, then it's going to make a lot more sense once we start dealing with these applications. But you've got to be comfortable with y equals cos x and y equals sine, fat, sine x. The transformation, sliding them back and forth, right? Changing the amplitudes, changing the frequency or the period, okay? Uh, and moving it up and down, vertical displacement. So uh, look at those in a little bit more detail very shortly again. Uh, but what we want to look at maybe are what types of periodic functions are you looking at? What types of things do you know reoccur on a daily basis, on a yearly basis, on a whatever, uh, just recur at all, you know, uh, on an hourly basis? Well, hopefully if you gave it some thought, you'd be able to think of things like orbits or tides or moon phases, right? Those are pretty obvious ones, and we see them every day. Uh, things like population, predator-prey relationships, you can imagine a, um, you know, as uh, your prey population increases right as your prey population increases well let me, let me do this differently so say your wolves are going up yeah yeah your prey increases so your predators decrease because it's eating them all and there's a point well look i'm running out of uh, prey i'm running out of prey well then look your predator starts going down as well when it bottoms out there aren't a lot of predators or prey you're losing prey still and then as you don't have any more prey, your predator are increasing again, which means that your prey will, or your predators again, will increase after that. A lot of predator prey words there. If you follow that, awesome. If not, you know, we can discuss it in class and sort it out. Let's think about things like daylight or temperature. Temperature changes every day, right? It starts off cold, it gets warmer throughout the day, and then it goes back down, or it changes over a year, right? Which months are the coldest, which months are the warmest? Sunlight, same thing. You could look at a day thing. The sun rises and sets every day, but the sun also gets higher in the sky during the summer and lower in the sky during the winter, which means you have longer days in the summer and shorter days in the winter. So they follow cyclic patterns as well. Very predictable, right? And that's the idea with these functions is that once you get an idea of what's going on, you can predict things. There's patterns that we notice. And if in a more sort of physical sense here, we can think about Ferris wheels, which are circular in a vertical way. And you can think of carousels, which are circular in a horizontal way. Okay, those are more sort of practical visual types of situations that you will be dealing with this as well. Okay, now we can't lose sight of this information. This is some of the most important stuff here. Okay, this is your basic sine function with its transformations, your A being your amplitude, your B affecting your period, and C being your phase shift or your horizontal movement, and D being your vertical displacement, how far up and down. This right here is the relationship between the B value and the period. And please understand that what you need the B for is your equation, right? You need the B in your equation, and the period that's used for the graph because you need to know how big your period is so that you can graph it correctly. Okay, now let's look at a couple examples and hopefully we'll be able to answer some of your questions. So here is a situation. These are tides in a seaport, could be any seaport, but obviously the size of the tide matters. The amplitude here is 2.5 meters. That's definitely not here because we have a tide that is much bigger than 2.5 meters. Uh, maybe not that much bigger, but it's definitely bigger. Uh, so let's have a look, find the maximum and the minimum tide, right? So we got to look at this graph and see if we can figure a couple things out here. Max and min tide, it kind of depends on where your graph is. If it's right here in the middle, it only goes up and down a little bit. 
If it's up here, then it goes up and down from there. If it's down here, it goes up and down from there. So in order to find out your max and min, you actually need to know where the midline is, right? And that midline would be your D value. And your D value is 13.4. So let's just go right here, put 13.4 and say, okay, that is the mid. And it's going to go up a bit and it's going to go down a bit. And what is that bit that it goes up? That's the amplitude. My A is 2.5. So from 13.4, you're going to go up 2.5 to 15.9 and you're going to go down from 2.5 to 10.9 which means that your maximum tide will be at 15.9 and your minimum tide will be at 10.9 okay because it goes fluctuates from 13.4 up two and a half down two and a half up down up down and you get this periodic cycle okay there you go so this is how we're interpreting the values the a the b the c and the d okay now the time between high tides, the time between high tides. So say this is your function, something like this, right? The time between high tides would be what they call your period. So then we look, need to look at this relationship here. Your period, period is two pi over B. Well, what's your B value? Your B is 0 0.164 pi. Okay. So then your period, okay, through that relationship will be two pi over 0 0.164 pi. You notice the pi's cancel, so all you end up doing is 2 divided by 0 0.164, and you get 12.2 hours, okay? So 12.2 hours, even though it's not specified here that it's hours, okay, it will be, and if you're not sure, then you can always ask, but in this case, yes, it's hours, okay? And that's how we uh, interpret those in uh, the information in those equations okay uh, we talked about populations well we have cyclic populations occurring in pretty much most animals even humans uh, maybe we can relate to uh, uh, an ant population or insect population fluctuating as well depending on whether it's hot or cold or whether there's lots of food or whether there's an infestation of something right these things fluctuate now uh, I have an equation here the amount of ants with respect to time uh, is 1500 plus 400 sine pi over 2t. Now, let's rearrange this into a formula or into a form that makes a little bit more sense where that's my a value, right? Sine. Let's split this thing up. Let's call it pi over 2t, all right? Uh, plus 1500. Now, maybe it would help right away to look at your different values. Your b is pi over 2 and your c uh, is 0 and your d is 1500. These are the four bits of information that you get from your sine function, okay, from your trig function. Now, let's see if we can interpret the questions that they ask here. Uh, so find the period of this function, okay, the period. So b is equal to your period, so it's 2 pi, okay, so your period is equal to 2 pi over b, which is pi over 2. So in this case, it's going to be 4. So it takes four years for this thing to be cyclic, to go from, to do one full cycle, right? One full cycle. Now, we're talking about years since 2000. So when we look at the next question, which is find the max and min of the first cycle, well, not quite yet, sorry. I'm not using the time yet, but look, your mid datum, your D is up 1500. So here we go, 1500, right? That's the middle. Now your amplitude, it goes up 400, so that would be to 1900, and down 400 to 1100. So it means that your max would be 1900, and your minimum would be 1100. So that means that it goes from 1500 up to 19, down to 11, back to 15 in one cycle. Now, the one cycle takes four years. So that would be three, uh, that would be two, that would be one, and that would be zero. So after one year max, two years back to 15, three years back down to 1100, four years back to 1500, and that cycle basically is repetitive on and on and on, right? So the last thing we're looking at here, let me slide it up so I can leave all the information here, how many ants in 2018? So that would mean that your T is equal to 18 years if it's from the year 2000, right? So now we're looking at putting 18 in here. So you can have 400 sine 18 pi over 2 plus 1500. Now, that would be 400 sine 9 pi plus 1500. And this is the bad boy that you need to be able to sort out. What is sine 9 pi, right? Well, here, 0, right, all the way around. 
is 2 pi all the way around again is 4 pi all the way around again is 6 pi all the way around again is 8 pi now I've got 1 pi left which means I end up over here so this is pi or 9 pi since those are coterminal angles what you need to do is figure out what the value of pi is and sine pi you guys know is 0 so what happens is this completely disappears and you end up with 1500 again right because if sine pi is 0 then 0 times 400 is 0 and you end up with just 1500 so it means that you did that cycle and look it makes sense four and you're back here at 16 no at, uh, at eight and then back at 12 and then back at 16 so you're like here at 16 17 um and 18 years and boom you're back down at zero so it does make a little bit of sense if you follow those patterns okay so that is that let's look at one last question here which is a little bit different but it's kind of cool in the sense that we plotted a couple things up so here we have a table that looks like this and it shows the temperatures for winnipeg manitoba you can do this for any place at all and the cool thing is, is that when you plot this data up you actually get something that looks like a sine wave now where do they get these functions from they get it from data like this they record data they plot them up they even input them into calculators right you go into here and you put a table in right you can start putting numbers in here uh, well let me get rid of this function first clear 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 and then you go to table you can start putting numbers in here right any numbers that I want well I can uh, Wow, do I have another function in here or something? Anyways, you can actually input your own numbers in here and uh, then do what they call a regression model and it gives you an equation. I can show you guys that in class if you're interested. It's also part of the, uh, uh, the foundations of math, of course. But anyways, what we've got here is a plot of the uh, information in this table. And then we're going to ask you a bunch of questions. Find the amplitude and period of this function. So first of all, what you need to do is find the amplitude and the period. I think the period is pretty easy. You can understand that the period is just 12 months, right? There's nothing funky about that. 12 months is the period. Now the question would be, okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. what's the amplitude? Well, the amplitude, you have to find the max and the min first. So what's the max? The max value you can see is 20 degrees. It's the highest one in here. It's 20 degrees. The minimum you can see is probably, where are we, uh, negative 19. Okay, so that's the negative 19. So the spread here is uh, the delta T, your change in temperature here, is 39 degrees, right? Which means that it has to, and if it goes up a certain bit and down a certain bit, if you divide that by 2, what you get 19.5. So that's actually your amplitude. It's 19.5, which means that your D value is 0 0.5 because 0 0.5 plus 19.5 gives you 20. 0 0.5 minus 19.5 gives you negative 19, which is your lowest temperature. So the datum, right, or the midpoint, is a, a crucial piece of information to find. And we can find it by finding the amplitude and then taking away from the max. 20 minus 19.5 is 0 0.5. Or adding it to the min, right? Negative 19 plus 19.5 is 0 0.5. So now we've got the D value as well. Determine the phase shift with respect to cos x. Well, that's a little bit trickier. Let's look at just a graph now because I've got the, the tables in there, uh, in here. We don't really need it anymore. So you can see that a cos function, remember a cos function, ladies and gentlemen, starts up at the top here, right? And then it goes down. Sine function starts in the middle. Uh, if you start in the middle and go down, that would be negative sine. If you started at negative 1 instead of positive 1, it would be negative cos. So what we're looking at is starting up at the top here, right here. And I've already got my A value. I've got my D value. Um, I can find my B value by saying 2 pi over the period, which is 12. So pi over 6 would be my B value. And now you're looking for the phase shift, which is the C value. Now, here we are right here. Okay, now uh, what we're looking to do is to figure out how to get this over here. Or actually, if it started here, how does it get over there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? It goes right seven. So if it goes right seven, then it's going to be 
uh, and we're talking t, so let's say month, let's say month m minus 7. Okay, now if we put it all together, all together, you can find an equation in the form, blah, blah, blah. So let's look at this. Y is equal to A bracket, um, or not even A, sine B bracket X minus C plus D. Well, my amplitude is 19.5, um, and we're using a cos function, so let's use cos. My B value is pi over 6, right? And then uh, my it's M minus 7, and then it's plus 0 0.5. So this is all the information that I got off the graph. And boom, there is your equation, right? So let's see if this actually makes sense. If um, I can see that the temperature in October, uh, let's look at this. The temperature in October is 6, okay? The monthly temperature in October is 6 degrees, okay? What would be the temperature in October according to this function here okay so October would be month equals 10 so now let's plug it in so y is equal to so let's do this first it's gonna be cos pi over 6 times 3 right because 10 minus 7 is 3 so this is gonna be cos 3 pi over 6 which is cos pi over 2 so now if we look at this thing right y equals 19.5 uh, cos pi over 2 plus 0 0.5. Then we can figure this out. Cos pi over 2. Hopefully you remember that cos pi over 2, look at the graph even, right? As you get down, pi over 2, cos pi over 2 is 0. So this whole thing becomes 0, which means that the equation tells me that it's 0 0.5. The graph tells me that it's 6, so it's off, right? Maybe it's not the line of best fit, but we've done the best thing that we can. Um, the idea was to show you how all these things are connected, and hopefully we achieve that to some degree. There are way more applications questions, ladies and gentlemen, that we can do. Uh, please try them out of your book. I will provide you with sheets as well, and we'll sort them out. Um, come and talk to me. Have a fantastic day.